Hello everyone, and welcome to Ultimate Fanfiction, so we are back with an interesting series on what if Naruto become a god of snakes, foxes. But before we start, I just want to remind you to please subscribe to my channel and hit the like button if you enjoy my content. Let's start the story. Konoha, a village full of ninja and civilians and almost everyone in this village knew of one person in the village by sight. Naruto Uzumaki. However for a village that says to look underneath the underneath they failed to do so. Why you ask? Simple really. How can a village never see someone who is with him most of the time in his life and never question why? Who is she and how come they never asked her why she was around him? Who knows but considering who she is they should have. Currently 13 year old Naruto was sitting at his own private training ground as he called it. It was not an official training ground but it was far enough in the forest that the villagers never came by and unless a ninja was sent there they left it alone. Naruto had just returned from the wave mission yesterday and today he was meeting his only true friend in the world. Well friend is a loose term on this. Naruto may have acted like an idiot and in love with Sakura, his teammate but that was far from the truth. He was convinced at a young age to hide his real skills and intelligence. Who convinced him? Let's meet her. A 16 year old girl with brown hair and brown eyes walked into the field and Naruto tensed when he first felt her presence and a true smile appeared on his face. As she got closer Naruto noticed she was wearing her green chunin shorts with white tape underneath them and a green shirt with a black jacket pulled back so you could see her body underneath. Naruto said, It's good to see you Hanaheim, how are you today? Hana smiled and said, Fine, so did you practice what I told you? Naruto nodded and said, Yes, the technique helped after I channeled Kayubi's chakra into my nails. I also worked on the kuniya balancing also. I was able to do it for two hours last night before I went to bed. Hannah nodded and said, Okay, I want to have a spar to see what we need to work on, you ready? Naruto smirked and said, Let's see what you got. Hannah got into a tiajutsu stance of the Inazuka family. Her right hand was out in front with her claws out and her left hand was close to the inside of her rib for a gouge. Both feet spread apart ready to run based on what a dog would look like. Naruto had got into the hummingbird stance. His stance was one with both hands at his side knuckles toward his opponent and his body turned sideways to make his hittable target area even smaller. Hana looked at him and said, You never did tell me where you got that Tiajutsu stance at Naru-kun. Naruto said, I may have only been caught the last time but I have actually taken that scroll several times. Inside I found a blood seal my father left in it with some scrolls for me. This stance is one of them. Hana nodded and started to circle Naruto and he just merely stepped one or two steps to keep his left side facing her. Hana said, You think you can make me your bitch this time? Smirking as Naruto got red in the face. Naruto decided too can play this and said, I smell you want me to. This time it was Hana turn to go red and then a bird flew through the clearing and like that Hana pulled out a kuniya and threw it at Naruto. Naruto disappeared in a flash of red and appeared in front of Hana going for a slice across her shoulder. Hana took a swipe at Naruto tearing the side of the shirt he had on. Naruto disappeared in another flash of red and tried to punch her in the back only for her to turn and grab his arm pulling him forward and flipping him in the air. Naruto landed on a tree and used it as a springboard to go back at Hana. Hana who was protecting her shoulder changed her stance and used Gatsuga, piercing fang, to charge Naruto. Naruto who was in mid-air could not avoid the direct attack and used two cage bunshins to grab him and threw him in the air to avoid her attack. Unfortunately Naruto was not the only one who knew cage bunshin and a second Gatsuga crash into him in the back. His two clones were destroyed by the original Gatsuga. However all three of them went up in a puff of smoke. Naruto who was slowly getting up looked up and saw Hana standing over him smirking and she said, So, who is the top dog? A kuniya at her throat made her flinch and the Naruto on the ground went up in a puff of smoke. Hana turned her head and said, So how did you pull that one of Naru-kun? Rubbing her butt into his crotch to tease and distract him. Naruto who was trying to stay focused said, When you hit me with the second Gatsuga when I first landed I instantly used replacement with one of my two clones. Feeling a problem in his pants. Hana smirked feeling it and said, but my cage bunshin took out both yours so how did you replace with it? Naruto groaned at the discomfort and said, I did it before they hit so I had to take two gatsugas but you never expected it and that gave me the advantage. 
slowly loosing his grip on the kunia he had. That was all that Hannah needed as she brought her hips forward a little and pushed back hard knocking the air out of him causing the already loose kunia to drop to the ground. Hannah using her momentum to bring her head back and into Naruto's nose and spun around putting her left foot between his leg too as she grabbed his shirt to fling him to the ground. Naruto did the only thing he could and grabbed her shirt and tearing it even more than it already was and it also did not help the fact that he grabbed her shirt right over her breast as they both fell to the ground rolling to see who would come out on top. Hannah wound up on top in a very compromising position with her groin right on his and Naruto still held onto her shirt over her breast. Hannah said, looks like I am not your bitch yet, as she moved in a slow hump to tease him. When Hannah was caught off guard by Naruto advances she was not expecting him to flip her to the side where he was on top of her with his leg straddling hers and had his knee in her groin but his face was over hers and said, you are now, and he quickly put his lips on her causing her eyes to go wide as his tongue enter her mouth. She closed her eyes as he rubbed his knee against her and she was becoming extremely turned on. Naruto broke the kiss and started to kiss down her neck but when he got to the base of it he bit her and started to suck the bite a little and lick the blood coming out of it. Hannah gasped at the pleasure and pain she got from it. They both understood what he was saying there. She had taught him all about how her family worked as well as the pack mentality. However all good things must come to an end as Naruto and Hannah both felt and presence entering the area. Naruto groaned and Hannah smelled the air and said, Damn it, runt. Naruto helped her to her feet and said, I love you Hanaheim. Hannah kissed him and said, Hide for a moment, I will get rid of him. Naruto nodded and quickly jumped up into a tree and hid on the backside releasing a little of his fox scent thanks to Kayubi to cover his actual scent. Hannah's eyes widened as her senses picked it up and smiled to herself and said in a loud voice, Runt, what are you doing out here? Kiba walked into the clearing and saw what looked like a little light training was done here and said, Mom sent me to tell you're wanted at the Hokage Tower. Hannah sighed and said, Fine runt. I will leave in a minute after I get my stuff picked up. Akamaru started to yip and Kiba said, What do you mean a fox is in the area? Hannah said, I saw one earlier but lost track of it. Kiba seeing this as a challenge to best his sister said, Come on boy, let's find the fox. And Akamaru yipped. Naruto tensed for a moment but created a cage bun shin and had it hinge into a fox and run through the clearing heading away from the area. Kiba saw it and his dog barked and both took off following it. After they were far enough away Naruto had the fox go into a hole and dispel. He then jumped down only to be thrown against a tree by Hana who said, so it's almost time. Naruto said, a promise is a promise. Hana nodded and leaned forward kissing him and said, I can't wait. I need to go, CYA Naru kun. And she left in a swirl of leaves. Naruto sighed and walked back to the village. When Hana arrived at the Hokage Tower, she was a little flushed because of the action with Naruto but became surprised that most of the Junins of the village was there. The Hokage looked around and then everyone turned to look and a silver haired Junin with with one eye covered holding a pink book. He sighed and said, now that everyone's here would those of the rookies teams please come forward and tell us if you nominate any. Asuma said, I nominate my entire team, Kuranai said, I nominate my entire team. Kakashi said, I definitely nominate Sasuke and Sakura, I feel Naruto not ready but the experience would be good for him. A snort was heard in the back of the room and everyone turned and saw it was Hana who snorted and Kakashi said, what? Hana said, I checked out the teams to check and see if my brother would need to work on anything privately and I think the actual weakest person on your team is Sakura, the only thing I saw Naruku. To was probably lack of actual combat strategies Bekwase the only person who spars with him is the Uchiha who only reacts to what his opponent does. If Naruto doesn't have some battle strategy from someone how can he learn to adapt so the Uchiha can react different? That's just my opinion from observation. Kakashi said, well. I appreciate your concerns but my students are fine. The third coughed to get everyone's attention and said, very well, all three teams are confirmed, let's continue with the others. Hannah sighed to herself and noticed she had got the attention of two Junins, Kuranai and Anko who also happened to be her friends on some things had heard the little slip and were going to find out what's up. Naruto walked into his apartment and sat down. He smiled a true smile as he thought about the woman he just left. He remembers the first time he met her. 
Flashback A five-year-old Naruto was panting as he hid in some bushes to hide from a mob that was after him. He felt someone touch his shoulder and jumped but a hand went over his mouth and he heard a girl's voice say, Quiet or they will find you. Naruto just nodded his head and the hand was removed from his mouth. He turned and said, Hi, are you going to hurt me too? The girl smiled and said, No Naruto, I am not going to hurt you, in fact I want to help. Naruto looked at her and asked, why and how do you know my name? Three growls brought his attention to the girl's side and he saw four dogs, three of which were solid gray and a taller older looking black dog bit each of the three on the ear and turned to Naruto and said, Easy boy. The pops are excited by the fox scent in you and the young master here knows your name from me. Naruto stared wide eye pointing a finger and said, You talk. A giggle brought his attention to the side and he saw the girl smile and she said, Kuromaru is one of the top dogs in our pack. Most of the older dogs can talk. A growl was heard and Naruto turned and saw Kuromaru growling toward the way the villagers that chased him went. Kuromaru said, Hide, quick. Naruto jumped into the bushes and a moment later a man walked by and said, Little girl, have you seen a blonde hair boy walk by here? The girl said, Buzz off mutt. The man sneered at her and went to draw back his fist when the three pups started to growl and Kuromaru said, Leave human or I will let the pups taste your blood. The man backed up and quickly left. Kuromaru waited a moment and said, He's gone boy. Naruto slowly crawled out of the bushes and said, Why did you warn me and help me? Kuromaru looked around and said, Can you make it to the Hokage Mountain? Naruto nodded and he said, Wait a few minutes after we leave and meet us there and I will tell you, come Hana. Pups. And he turned and started to walk away. About 30 minutes later Naruto made it to the top of the Hokage Mountain and saw the three pups asleep and Hana sitting asleep against Kuromaru. Naruto said, I am here. Hana turned and smiled at him before falling asleep Aegean but Kuromaru said, I know. Come sit here, we have much to discuss. Naruto walked over and sat down and said, so what now? Kuromaru said, I know who you are boy. I am probably the only being in this village beside the Hokage and Hana here who knows. Naruto said, I am Naruto Uzumaki, everyone knows that, I think. Scratching the back of his head. Kuromaru grunted and said, No boy, that is what someone gave you as a name. Your real name is Kazama not Uzumaki. I smell you father sent even with the fox inside you. Naruto looked confused and said, What fox and who is my father? Kuromaru said, You heard of the demon fox that attacked five years ago. Naruto nodded yes and Kuromaru said, Good pup. Long story short, your father stopped the fox by sealing him in you to save the village. I know this because I was on the battlefield and I know his scent because he often came to our pack to pick up Rin. I can smell his scent in you even now even though the fox covers most of it. Naruto scratches the back of his head confused and said, So am I the fox? Kuromaru actually howled at that and finally calmed down and said, No. You are human. Naruto finally asked, Why did you help me and why tell me this? Kuromaru said, You master Rin before she left asked me to look after her master and his family. She was worried when her pack lost members so I kept eye on him. Now since he not here to watch you I watch for him. Naruto nodded and said, What does she have to do with this? Kuromaru said, To help you I need my master's permission to leave. I told her so she can help me leave pack for a while. She seen what happened to you and want to help you. Me think she like you, perhaps make you her mate. Naruto said, She wants me to be her mate. Knowing he heard people talk about mates before but it was with the word team in front but they always together so maybe that's what she want. To be together like a teammate. Kuromaru looked at the sleeping girl and said, Perhaps. If you want to be her mate, you need to get stronger and smarter to defend your pack. Naruto nodded his head and said, What else? Kuromaru thought for a moment and said, The old dog knows to hide his claws until he is ready so not to dull them. The young pup walks with claws out all time, breaking them. You must do what the old dogs do to be her mate. Don't show what you claws until you are ready to fight. I must go now, we will me again boy. Young master needs to get home and the pups need to eat. Naruto nodded and saw Hana open her eyes and he smiled at her and said, 
I am going to be the best mate to you. And he left smiling ignoring the shocked look on her face. Hannah turned to Koromaru and said, Did he just say he want to be my mate? Kuromaru smiled to himself and said, Young boy is strong and someday make good mate, he need help from his pack to do it though. Hannah looked at him and said, You told me he did not have a pack anymore. Kuromaru said, You are of his pack now as he is part of yours. Hannah nodded and smiled walking over to her puppies and waking them up to go home. End flashback. Naruto smiled at that memory. Funny thing is someone else had the same smile in the meeting she was in getting two more curious glances from her friends. After the meeting was over Anko and Kuranai both grabbed Hannah before taking her away in a swirl of leaves. They appeared outside the hot springs and Hannah said, what's going on? Anko looked at her and said, well you seemed flush when you arrived at the meeting and then you defending Naruto like that and then almost calling him Kum. We just wanted to relax while you told us what's going on with you and the biggest prankster in the village. Kuranai said, Anko, don't you think you're jumping to conclusions? Anko said, not really, look at her neck. Kuranai looked at it then raised an eyebrow and said, okay, maybe you're not jumping to conclusion. Hannah groaned and said, let's relax, as she walked into the hot springs followed by both her friends who were trying to figure out what was going on. When they got in the water they looked around and had the place to themselves so Anko said, are you going to tell us or do we force you? Hannah said, there's nothing to tell. Kuranai said, then what's that bite on your neck? Hannah said, it's a love bite. Anko said, from the Kayubi brat. Hannah accidentally let a growl escape her mouth but unfortunately both of the other women heard it and Kuranai looked shocked and said, how long you both been together? Hannah said, you both not going to let this drop are you? Anko smiled sadistically and said, nope. Hannah sighed and said, since he was five and I was eight, happy. Both women were shocked and Kuranai said, why, not that I think he's a bad kid or anything, an idiot at times but. She was interrupted by laughing. Hannah finally quit laughing and said, so he fooled you also. He may act like an idiot but he is almost a genius actually. Just like his father. Both women looked at her like she was crazy so Anko asked said, who's Gaki's father? Hannah said, I will give you a hint, take away his whiskers, and a growth spurt and he is the spitting image of his father. Kuranai and Anko both though about it but since they double you were only about five when Yandiame died they don't remember him much. Anko said, give us more. Hannah said, I will tell you this, he plans to reveal his true self at the Chunin exams so don't be surprised. Kuranai sighed and said, that's only a week away. Hannah said, I can't wait either, one month later we're getting married after his 14th birthday. Anko jerked her head so fast you thought she had whiplash and Kuranai said, wait, what? Hannah smiled and said, since I know who he is and also the way my clan is set up I can marry anyone I choose as long as he can beat the clan head heir who is Kiba since I don't want the title since I already plan to leave to be in his family. Kuranai said, but, how can you be sure he can beat Kiba? Hannah laughed and said, Kiba never stood a chance Ajans Narukum, especially after I've been helping train him since he was five. Both women were shocked Ajian and Kuranai said, but if you've been training him then why did he fail the academy three times? Hannah said, simple, he failed because of the same reason he did the last time. He is physically unable to make regular bunchons because he has too much chakra. The only way he could do it is if a Hyuga cut off half of his point. His chakra control is actually very good but because of the fact he can't make regular bunshin he could not pass. That's also why he learned Kaj bunshin in one night because his control is so good. Kuranai said, if his chakra control is so good, why then did Kakashi say he had trouble with tree walking exorcis? Hannah sighed and said, Kuranai, about how many things have you taught your team? jutsu or skill wise. Kuranai thought for a moment and said, probably about 15 to 20, why? Hana said, Kakashi has taught them one thing only and that was tree walking. Naruto already knew it but Kakashi had told Sakura since she got it right on the first try before Naruto or Sasuke did it that she had to guard Tazuna while he was hurt. 
Naruto knew doing nothing would not help so he acted like he had trouble but actually had probably 200 cage bunshins on a nearby stream waterwalking and trying to get the Kuniya balancing figured out. Anko paled and said, that's Avnu Chakra control technique. Hana nodded and said, last night he said he did it for two hours after he went home. Kurinai said, how strong is he actually? Hana said, I got this mark today because he beat me. I told him a long time ago he could not mark me as his until he beat me. Anko said, why would he want to mark you? Hana said, I told him my family way of thinking. Well I got to go, as she got up and left. Anko looked at Kurinai and said, what do you think? Kurinai sighed and said, damn it, that's a nice piece of ass too. Anko said, things not working with Asuma Aegean. Kurinai snorted and said, he told me he didn't want to kiss because it was his last sig before he went to the store. What about Uruka? Anko said, ouch, Uruka is too busy with his students all the time and is actually afraid of me I guess. It's hard finding a decent guy. Kurinai said, that's what started us if I recall to help get over being horny all the time. Anko smirked and said, maybe if what she says is true we can still have some fun with her and Gaki. Kurinai said, what do you mean, not that I would really mind if he's a decent guy. Anko said, I think I know who his father is and she won't be his only wife if I am right. Kurinai looked shocked and said, who? Anko said, add whiskers to the faces on the mountain and tell me what you see. Kurinai looked at the Hokage mountain and imagined whiskers on each of their faces and gasped when she reached the last one. She turned and said, perhaps you're right Anko. In a shower across town a certain blonde sneezed. The next morning Naruto awoke earlier than normal because he sensed something or a better word was someone in his apartment. He reached under his pillow and grabbed his kuniya he had there and kept his breathing calm so whoever it was would not know. Naruto took a deeper breath to see if he knew who this person was. Hana had told him how to identify people and objects with smell. Not recognizing the scent he secretly got out of bed and walked to his bedroom door. He felt whoever was in the other room suddenly disappear so he carefully went into his front room to see what they were here for. He looked around his room and was surprised when he saw a scroll with his name on it. He opened the scroll and read Gaki who I am is unimportant right now. I have a test for you to see if you can figure it out. Inside this scroll are three items. Each item has a separate scroll attached to them telling how you are to do something. Don't unseal the next level of the jutsu until you master the first part enough to do it ten times in three minutes. It is a jutsu only two people in the world ever knew and if you can do it you will be three. It was one of your father's jutsu. I want you to try and figure out the trick to each part on your own and don't show anyone the scroll or I will never reveal what I want to you. Also inside this scroll is a little something for you on your wedding night. Signed the world's biggest super pervert. Naruto looked at the items inside the scroll. A copy of Icha Icha Paradise, a bunch of rubber balls, a bunch of water balloons and air balloons. Naruto took the first scroll and read it. Okay Gaki, first step. Take a water balloon and use only chakra to make it explode. Note, think of your name for help. Naruto looked at the scroll Aegean and thought my last name, Uzumaki Naruto, spiraling maelstrom. Naruto looked at the scroll and then what it said and then thought, okay. If this technique is all about chakra only then add that to my name means it has to move in a spiral. Naruto then put the scroll away but grabbed 10 balloons and a ceiling scroll for storing important items, he quickly put them in it and started getting ready for the day. After getting his things ready he then ran to his team training grounds. Seeing as his teammates had not made it yet he decided to work on this new technique but not in the open. He quickly created a cage bun shin and jumped over the railing of the bridge landing on the water and walking under the bridge. The cage bun shin sat down on the bridge to wait for his teammates. Unfortunately about 300 yards downwind of him two figures seen this. One whose one eye got wide and the other who was grinning. The one who was grinning said, it appears that what I heard was right, Hakakashi. He's been training privately with that girl. Kakashi finally got over his shock and said, I wonder what else he's hiding. No wonder she snorted yesterday at the selection meeting. Jiraiya said, you mean when you said Naruto not ready for the exams but the experience would be good for him. I am disappointed in you Kakashi. 
I have checked on your teams several times since I knew the truth about the boy's origins and was planning on taking him as my apprentice when the time came. You have not only been failing him but Sakura as well. Kakashi sighed and said, perhaps. What was that? Both men turned to look at the sound of a water balloon popping and water hitting water. Jiraiya looked to where Naruto was and said, I be damn, he has not worked on it longer than two hours and he has already gotten the first stage. Kakashi looked at Jiraiya and said, first stage of what? Jiraiya said, what Urashi wanted him to learn. Kakashi turned to Jiraiya and said, you kidding, how can you expect him to do what Sensei took three years to create? He may be good but he's not ready for such a technique. Jiraiya said, and you're not already preparing the Uchiha to learn you only jutsu. I seen the private lessons you've been giving the boy and don't tell me it's just to train the Sharingan. We both know that's not why. Kakashi said, well, they are my students so I will train them how I want. You may be a great teacher but even you would never take help from another. Jiraiya looked at Kakashi and said, how about a little challenge? Kakashi said, what you have in mind? Jiraiya smirked and said, we have six days till the Chunin exams begin. We both train our choice of students and see who gets farther. Now there is an old saying that was created with Kakashi in mind. Pride before presidents. Kakashi seemed to think it over and said, Fine. Get your student and go. Jiraiya just nodded his head and said, I will have him return the day of the exams, and he left walking on top of the water toward the bridge. Naruto a few minutes earlier was trying to get the balloon to pop with motion only going one way, he could get it to flatten out but not pop he thought, think about my name. Spiral, spiral, spy. Maelstrom. Multiple directions, that's as rotating in multiple direction. And he started to concentrate on getting to go more than one way. Concentrating and he started to get it going in more than one direction. It still would not pop but it did have bumps. He sighed and looked down at the water and saw several swirls in the water and then thought, that's it, and started trying it Aegean. A few moments later it popped. He smiled and pulled it out Aegean and started trying to get it down to 10 in less than 3 minutes. He looked up and saw a white-haired man with a head protector for oil on it walking on the water toward him. He then tensed as he felt both his teammates arrive on the bridge. The man walked over and said, Gaki, good job on step 1. Dispel the clone and come with me. I am taking you as an apprentice. Up on the bridge Sakura and Sasuke were looking at the man standing on the water and Sasuke said, What clone and who are you? He heard a gasp beside him and Sakura looking at him and said, Sasuke-kun, that's Jiraiya of the Sanins. Sasuke said, So I see they finally decided to get me a decent teacher. Fine old man, let's go. And he started to walk around the bridge. Jiraiya looked at him and said, I am not talking about you Uchiha. I am talking about the Gaki who've been training under the bridge before you ever got here. Come on Gaki, you're ready for step 2. Naruto who was on the bridge said, Why should I trust you? Jiraiya said, Remember the scroll I left this morning. Remember who I said the techniques is. I was his teacher. Now come on, we have 6 days before the exams. Naruto under the bridge looked at him and thought, dad's techniques. Fine. And he dispelled the kajbunshin on the bridge startling both his teammates and walked out on the water pissing Sasuke off even more. Naruto said, what about my team? Jiraiya said, I already talked to Kakashi, besides you need to get ready for your female friend that's been training you. Naruto was startled by that and said, how do you know that? Jiraiya said, I will tell you later in private. I am sure you don't want to reveal it before you have a chance to prove yourself, right? Naruto nodded and said, Let's go, where do you want to train at? Jiraiya said, We need a place with a waterfall, no any good places like that. Naruto nodded and walked over to Jiraiya and put his hand on his shoulder and both disappeared in a swirl of flames pissing Sasuke even more and shocking not only Sakura but Kakashi. Kakashi appeared a few minutes later and said, Sakura. I want you to take this scroll and start working on the three jutsu inside it. Here is also your applications for the Chunin exams. Be there Friday at 3 o'clock at room 321. Sasuke, come with me. Tossing the scroll to Sakura and grabbing Sasuke making them disappear in a swirl of leaves. Sakura was shocked but got over it and looked at the scroll, Genjutsu. 
Jiraiya and Naruto appeared at a waterfall behind the Hokage Mountain and Jiraiya turned to Naruto and said, What the hell was that gaki? Naruto said, I modified the leaf shushin. Jiraiya said, But flames, nobody can do flames. Naruto said, It can when you add furball's chakra to it. Jiraiya was shocked wondering how much he actually hid now, he decided to ask, How do you know how to use his chakra? Naruto said, Dad left me some scrolls inside the Forbidden Scroll and one told me how to manipulate the seal to draw his power without having to deal with him. I mostly just use him to speed up my recovery time. Jiraiya asked, How did you get the scrolls from the Forbidden Scroll? Naruto said, I was taught the basics of sealing for storage and I recognized the blood seal on it, having already been told my real name since I was five I saw it on the scroll and took it. Jiraiya asked the question that really bothered him and asked, Who told you your real name if you don't mind? Naruto smiled and said, One never tells on his pack. Jiraiya said, So it was that Hannah girl. Naruto said, Nope, not here. Now tell my, how do you know about her? Jiraiya smiled and said, I was doing research for my new book and I overheard her telling two other women at the hot springs. Nice bodies all of them, smiling pervertedly. Naruto growled and grew his nails out and said, You're a pervert, peeking on women. Jiraiya said, No, of course not. I am a super pervert and author of the one and only Icha Icha Paradise series. Naruto said, That's it, you're going down, and got into a hummingbird stance. Jiraiya paled seeing the stance and said, Let me guess, your dad scrolls. Naruto nodded and Jiraiya said, Okay, you can try and beat me later. Let's get this next lesson started because you have a lot to learn in the next six days. Next lesson is the power part. Catch! As he threw a rubber ball to Naruto. Naruto caught it and Jiraiya said, This part is about power. Put as much chakra as you can until you pop. He was interrupted by the ball exploding in Naruto's hands with a smile on his face. Jiraiya looked at him and said, I hate you, you're probably too tired to continue so. Naruto interrupted him and said, that was weak. Are you sure this jutsu needs a lot of power? I hardly put any in that to pop it. Jiraiya bit his thumb and went through some hand signs and slammed them on the ground, saying, Kachiyo say no jutsu. Summoning technique. And a frog appeared with a giant scroll and handed the scroll to Jiraiya. Jiraiya turned and said, Bite your thumb and sign your name in blood on it. Then memorize these seals. Showing the seals Aegean to Naruto. After the third time he nodded and signed his name. Jiraiya took the scroll back and said, I want to see about how strong you really are Gaki. I assume you can judge how much chakra you use since you know tree water and kuniya chakra control so put about half your power while performing the summoning jutsu. I want to see what I am working with. He crossed his arms while saying it. Naruto just shrugged his shoulders and did as told. Jiraiya had about one second to realize his mistake at this point as Naruto slammed his hands on the ground and the entire area was covered in smoke. A scream of, Jiraiya, why have you summoned me, was the next thing he heard as he stood gaping at Naruto who was standing on Gambunta's head. Jiraiya thought to himself, Kakashi, you really are an idiot, if that is only half his strength he is at least Junin or Abnu without the fox's chakra. There was none in that summoning. He then said, Gambunta, I didn't call you, Urashi's kid did. Gambunta looked on top of his head and said, So kid, what's your name? Naruto said, Naruto Uzumaki Kazama. Gambunta said, So you're the kid he used that night. Since you summoned me without the fox's help you can call me anytime but we have to have a drink sometime. CYA later. And he went up in a puff of smoke. When Naruto landed Jiraiya said, Kid, I was only planning on teaching you the Rasengan and summing but if you're this good I am going to teach you everything I can. Let's begin. Meanwhile on the other side of the village Kakashi appeared with Sasuke and he said, Okay Sasuke. I am going to show Jiraiya that you are better than Naruto will ever be. Turn on you Sharingan and start copying. This is the seals for Chidori. When you got them we will begin working on your physical strength and speed. As he started doing jutsus. Back in the village Sakura was walking through the village when she came upon Kiba and his sister Hana. Kiba said, Hey Sakura, why aren't you with your team today? Sakura said, Well, 
Kakashi took Sasukagan to train privately and Jiraiya of the Sanins came and took Naruto though I never saw a flame Shushin before and he said he was taking Naruto as his apprentice. Funny thing is Naruto was walking on water. Hana looked at Sakura and said, are you sure about the flame Shushin? Kiba said, don't worry sis, I am sure the dead last want stand a chance against me. Naruto, even with help from a Sanin will always be an idiot. Hana blew her top and hit Kiba on the head and said, Don't talk about Narakan like that. My fiancé is no idiot. I got to go find him and see what's happening. And leave Shushin away leaving two very shocked people. Kiba said, Did she just call him Naruto Narakan and he's her fiancé? Sakura whose mouth was still open from the shock just shook her head and Kiba said, Over my dead body. And took off toward his home. Sakura just shook her head and said, What's next? She had just walked around the corner and received another shock. Ino was kissing Choji on the lips. She grabbed her hair and took off screaming. A few moments earlier with Ino Ino screamed. I can't believe that in a few days I will get a chance to show Sasakaken how I am better than then forehead girl. Shikamaru said. You're too troublesome Ino, you will never get Sasuke because he's gay. I am starting to think you might be the same thing. You never even kissed a guy before. I don't think you even know how to. Ino became pissed and said, I will show you I know how to kiss. And she grabbed Shoji and kissed him until she heard a girl scream running away. She broke the kiss and said, What's was that? Shikamaru said, You just broke Sakura's heart. I guess she the troublesome one. Hana started tracking around the village. Suddenly she saw a huge frog appear on the west side of town. She said, That's got to be where he is. And took off toward his location. When she arrived she nearly had a heart attack. 1000 Naruto were holding a balloon in his hand and was concentrating. She jumped out of the tree she was in and a voice said, I must thank you girl, if I had not heard you talking with those other beautiful. He was stopped when he felt six kuniyas age against his body and saw several Naruto's standing fear. Naruto said, I told you once pervert I did not like the fact you peep on woman but then brag about it is another thing I don't like. Hannah who saw this narrowed her eyes at Jiraiya and said, So you were peeping on me and my two friends at the hot springs. I bet it's for your book, give me once reason why I should not neuter you right now. Jiraiya being the pervert he always is said, After you left the snake girl figured out your clue and they both want to hook up with you and Gaki. I have to agree with them on one thing though, you do have a nice ass. Big mistake. Suddenly every Naruto in the area that heard that started to growl and the balloons popped and they all walked over and started beating the shit out of Jiraiya. Unfortunately Jiraiya turned out to be a mud clone who dissolved into mud. Hana turned and said, So what has that pervert done? Naruto sighed and said, He broke in my house this morning and left me a scroll with one of my dad's jutsu. The Rasengan, he had me summon toads also. He put some weird seal over my heart also. He said it will make me stronger and faster. He won't show me how to take it off until the day of the exams. Hannah groaned and said, Shit. Naruto looked at her and said, What? Hannah said, Right before I came here I was with my brother and he saw your pink haired banshee and she told us what happened. Kiba called you an idiot and I sort of said something when I defended you. Naruto said, What could you have said that's so bad? Hannah said, I accidentally called you Narukun and my fiance. Naruto said, It's fine. Would you like some dinner? I am getting hungry. Hana said, Sure, what do you want? Naruto put his finger to his chin and said, Hum, I would like to have some of. Dot you, and grabbed her, pulling her into a kiss and pulling her as close to him as he could. Hana returned the kiss, and when they broke apart, she said, Not till after the exams. Naruto groaned and said, Fine. So what should we do till then? Hannah said, Well let's keep working on your training till dark. I got a mission tomorrow. Naruto said, Fine, let's go. And they began to spar. Jiraiya who had switched places with a clone when he felt Hannah arrive appeared in the Hokage office and said, We need to talk. The third looked up at Jiraiya and said, So what do I owe the pleasure of one of my favorite students visiting me? Jiraiya sat down in a chair and said, You know this village is really an idiot. To think they had a genius shinobi in their hands all this time and never knew it. The third said, What are you talking about Jiraiya? 
Jiraiya said. I am talking about my new apprentice. This got the third's attention since he knew Jiraiya said he would never take another and asked, so tell me who is it and why you took him as an apprentice. Jiraiya said, well, I will tell you about him before I tell you who he is and see if you can guess professor. He has cage level chakra and junin level chakra control, summoned Gambunta on his first try, learned the complete Rasengan in one day, as well as the hummingbird style Tiahutsu. Oh and did I forget to mention he is a mere genin, with a smirk as the third paled. The third said, are you serious? You and I know nobody in this village knows the hummingbird style and are you sure whoever he is that he is as good as you claim? Very serious because if someone actually was that good and a genin somebody's head was going to roll for not telling him sooner. Jiraiya said, oh and here is one more clue. He will be in the chunin exams with his real name Naruto Kazama. That caused the third to drop his pipe he had in his mouth and said, you had me going there for a moment. I thought you were serious. Jeriaya said, I am. He's known who his father was and has for a long time. Dead serious. The third dropped all composer and said, how did he find out? As far as I know only you and me know and if it Jiraiya. Jiraiya said, let's not worry about that for now. You should worry about the other problem. The third sighed and said, what is he planning to do? Jiraiya said, when this is over I can promise you one thing. Everyone is going to know the Kazama clan has returned because he plans to get married afterwards from what I heard and it appears he may have a small following amongst the female Junins. If he does know what I think he does all hell will break loose. The third looked at him questioningly and said, what do you mean by that? Jiraiya said, if my hunch is right a legend will be born at the Chunin exams. If I was you I would also arrange for him to fight Kiba who was on team 8. I would love to see you find a way to have him face multiple fighters to see his real skill. The third looked at him and said, you already know, don't you? Jeriaya only nodded his head yes and said, six days from now all hell will break loose. They should all start getting here tomorrow. The third nodded and said, good luck and I look forward to see what he really can do. Jiraiya left in a swirl of leaves. Naruto was currently reading the scroll he stole from Jiraiya pocket when he went and pointed the kuniyas at his groin. He smiled as he memorized the seals for the ten jutsu in it. Hana had already left to get rested for her mission in the morning. Jiraiya appeared and said, Good job, I had a hunch you would be able to get that from me. Your stealth skills were impressive and I never noticed but at least you were able to complete the mission. Naruto looked at him and asked, what do you want Erosanin? Jiraiya chuckled and tossed a kuniya at Naruto who caught it and looked at it before chuckling and said, So let me guess, you want to see what I can really do, huh? Jiraiya nodded and Naruto tossed the kuniya back at Jiraiya who caught it only to receive a kick in the gut a moment later with a yellow flash of light. Jiraiya smiled and said, So I was right. I figured if you had the Tiajutsu for it then you also had the Jutsu as well. Naruto stood up straight and said, well what do you plan to do now? Jiraiya said, I want you to show this village what you really are made of and also to bring your family name back to the world. I want you to show everyone that you are the son of the Yandaimi and not the demon he stopped. Naruto closed his eyes and said, then train me, if it's something I know I will tell you. I can do my clone training for a long time so I will divide them into groups of 25 and go from there while you train me physically. Jiraiya smiled and said, could not have said it better myself, let's go. Over the next five days the sound of constant battle could be heard but the third Hokage had forbid anyone from investigating saying it was a private training lesson with a sanin. People started to arrive for the chunin exams shocking the villagers because they all thought it was another month away but the third said there was a change this year. During that time no one in the village had seen Sasuke or Naruto. The other senses just trained regularly but with team 7 it was different. Finally the day of the prelim arrived for Konoha and the entire village had shown up to see who would go on. The third stepped out onto his podium and said, thank you all for coming. I know most of you are wondering what is going on with the Chunin exams this year so I will tell you. The lords decided that they are tired of always coming and watching the same techniques as the same villages show Thier Ninja so to solve this each village will hold their own matches and decide themselves what rank Thier Ninja are. Now without further delay I will show the matches of who will be first. 
First match Kabuto vs Sakura Sakura walked out into the ring and started to do hand seals until Kabuto said, You know, you really should watch your surroundings. Sakura blinked and looked around and noticed nothing wrong when she felt something hit the back of her legs and she fell forward toward the ground as her legs no longer worked. Kabuto went up in a puff of smoke and the real one came out of the hole and and said, I give up. I am a medic and that's the only two attack jutsu I know. The ref nodded and said, both competitors are out of the competition. Sakura was about to argue but her legs still refused to work. Kabuto walked over and healed her legs and they both walked off the field. A sign flashed and next match was Ino and Shikamaru. Ino walked out and started to yell at Shikamaru never noticing his shadow had already caught her and then he walked forward and leaned forward and she copied him and kissed her before pulling back and said, I give up. Ino fainted after the kiss so Shikamaru picked her up and carried her bridal style out of the ring. Everyone was getting bored of the matches. Next match was Hanada vs Li Li walked out and said, I will show you that a Hayuga can be beaten. And opened the first two gates after dropping his weights and became a blur and hit Hanada on the back of the neck before she even had time to activate her bloodline. People were starting to stand up and leave disappointed in the matches when the third Hokage said, Our next match is special. Uchiha Sasuke vs Naruto Kazama. Sasuke walked out in his outfit he had on the final in the show, but Naruto walked out dressed all in black and had the Yandaimi's cloak on, making everyone double take at this, never noticing the resemblance. He removed it before creating a clone and having it carry it out of the ring. Now he looks like he has a Junin outfit. Sasuke smirked and said, Who are you trying to fool Dobi? No way on earth could you ever hope to defeat an Uchiha and pulled out three shurikens and threw them at Naruto who simply yawned and did three hand seals and a gust of wind deflected the shurikens away. Kakashi appeared and saw Naruto new look and wondered what Jiraiya was trying to pull as he narrowed his eyes. Naruto said, Sasuke, you and me both know this is not going to be a little battle so let's step it up a notch. Sasuke smirked activating his bloodline and said, bring it Dobi. Naruto got into a fighting stance that shocked the entire stadium. Up in the stands Sakura and Lee were both looking at Thier Senses who let out a gasp and Kakashi asked. Did you teach him that guy? Guy said. No, I don't even know the basics of it but I do recognize it. Sakura asked. What's wrong Kakashi Sensei, you acting scared? A female voice from behind her said. They have every right to be. Narukan has learned that Taijutsu style called the hummingbird. It can't be copied because the user has to chain the way the body moves making anyone who has not done so through training will only hurt themselves and it's almost impossible to stop. Sakura looked at Hana and said, what do you mean? Guy said, it's just as she said, it is based on high speed and precise hitting. You can shatter every joint in a person body in less than 10 seconds if you want to with enough strat. Sakura was scared at that and looked back at the ring. Naruto deciding enough was enough charged Sasuke who was surprised by Naruto's speed and jumped back to avoid being hit and tried to deflect a blow with the Uchiha interceptor style but when his hand was hit he thought his wrist was shattered. He did a standing jump and tried to kick Naruto in the head but Naruto ducked and sent a punch to the ribs which made a sickening crunch noise that everyone could hear. Sasuke made a few hand seals and shot a three small fireballs at Naruto who jumped back and ducked under them. Sasuke ran up the wall and stopped before reaching the bands on his arm and removing them and then reaching down and doing the same to his legs and let them fall free to the floor. He then said, Naruto, I will show you a jutsu Kakashi showed me to deal with my brother. Let's see how well I learned it. And started to do hand signs and grabbed his arm as lightning went around it. Kakashi smirked thinking Sasuke was doing what he told him to do. Flashback. Sasuke looked at Kakashi after he finished copying the jutsu and Kakashi said, Sasuke, I have a mission for you. Jiraiya is planning on teaching Naruto a jutsu that is very powerful and is actually too powerful for Naruto to use properly. I want you to use this just you on Naruto but don't go for his body or head. I want you to hit him in his arm or leg so he won't be able to fight and also show Jiraiya that this is the true way to be conservative with power. Sasuke nodded and continued to train his body. End flashback. Guy looked at Kakashi and said, What are you thinking teaching him an assassination jutsu Kakashi? Jiraiya appeared next to Kakashi and said, I hope you're ready to bury one of your students Kakashi. Kakashi looked at Jiraiya and said, 
I taught Sasuke where to use that jutsu and I told him to immobilize Naruto by hitting him in the arms or legs. Jiraiya said. Did you teach him to use it on a high speed moving target? Kakashi blinked and said. No but Naruto can't be that fast. Sasuke has been holding back so it should not be a problem with his Sharingan. Jiraiya said. And what about when Naruto takes off his weights or use his father's signature move? Kakashi blinked and looked at Jiraiya and asked, What do you mean his father? I know only you and the third know who he was but I don't see how that could matter because any move he tries will be stopped by Sasuke. Sasuke came down from the wall and charged at Naruto who looked bored and screamed getting everyone attention. Kakashi watched with pride and then a moment later horror as Sasuke stabbed the Chidori right through Naruto's chest. Kakashi was about to say something when Naruto melted into the ground in a pile of mud and Sasuke looked around and saw the clone of Naruto still standing off to the side with the cloak from earlier. He looked at the clone and realized it was the real Naruto and said, so this whole time was a mud clone I was fighting. Now that you made me look bad by not noticing earlier I will kill you, and started to do hand signs Aegean for Chidori. Kakashi felt dread and was about to move when Jiraiya put his hand on Kakashi's shoulder and said, you are a fool Kakashi. Everyone could see Sasuke don't give a damn about anyone except killing his brother but you never would look or listen and if Naruto had not used a clone at the begging you would be burying your sensei's son. Now watch as Naruto shows the world who he really is. Looking back to the arena. Naruto walked back out to the arena floor from the side where he was at and put his father's cloak back on and said, Sasuke. Arozanan told me you would try and kill me with Kakashi Jutsu and I did not want to believe him but I listened to his advice and did that as a test. For that I will show something I have known for over two years and I will make my father proud, and reached into his cloak and pulled out a tripronged kuniya and threw it before doing the hand seals for kuniya cage bunshin and they multiplied from 1 to 21 and Naruto smirked at the confused look on Sasuke face as they all easily missed him and landed around the arena. Naruto threw one last one into the air in a slow arch toward Sasuke and it landed about a foot away from him. Kakashi realizing what's about to happen screams, Sasuke, get out of there. But it was too late as the first of many yellow flashes appeared and Sasuke started to get hit from all sides like a pinball while he still had the Chidori in his hand active and swinging it trying to hit Naruto. After being hit 21 times the last time he was hit he was sent straight into the air and Naruto stopped and looked at him and Sasuke turned in midair and coming down with the Chidori pointing toward Naruto. After landing on his feet he charged at Naruto determined to get him. Naruto dodged the strike and said, stop Sasuke or I will be forced to hurt you, as he held out one arm and started to form a Rasengan and when Sasuke was almost on him thrust the Rasengan up and intercepted the Chidori but because of the speed of Sasuke the Chidori pierced the protective wall of the Rasengan and all the energy from it blasted into Sasuke face cutting him multiple times and slashing both eyes destroying his Sharingan. Everyone screamed from panic of the blast but after it settled down Naruto was seen standing in the arena while Sasuke was holding his face with both hands groveling on the ground screaming in pain. Jiraiya looked at the mortified Kakashi and said, Congrats Kakashi, you just caused your student to go blind, as he walked away smugly. Kakashi wanted to be mad at Jiraiya for teaching Naruto the Rasengan but he was right, Kakashi pride had made him want to show Jiraiya up and in doing so cost his student his sight. The third stepped forward and said, Kakashi, why did you teach Sasuke who has already been diagnosed with a mental disorder and assassination jutsu that he used on a fellow leaf shinobi? Kakashi blinked and said, what about the Rasengan, it's an assassination jutsu also. The third said, good point, if Jiraiya had not warned Naruto about what you were teaching Sasuke then you would be burying one student while the other had to live the rest of his life knowing he killed his teammate. Naruto used the only jutsu he had access to with enough power to stop the Chidori. Sasuke had more than enough time to stop the Chidori but refused to because of his pride and if I heard you right a moment ago you ordered Sasuke to use it on Naruto. For that you are Irby demoted to Chunin and will have an evaluation to see if you should even be a ninja for not only playing favorites but also for neglect you have shown in judgment. As for Sasuke, his life as a ninja is over but he can still restore his clan, making everyone stunned by what the third just did. Kakashi bowed his head because he knew they were right. 
The crowd was upset about Thier Precious Uchiha getting hurt but with what the third said they could not blame Naruto and also he was the son of the Yondaimi so he also had a clan to restore and a lot of Sasuke fangirls suddenly switched clubs. Naruto was walking up toward the contestant area when he felt a chill go down his back and whispered, fangirls. Up in the stands Hana saw banners appear all around the arena with Naruto named on them and narrowed her eyes. A dark shroud covered the stadium as a cloud passed overhead but to those around Hanayu would think the end of the world was coming with the key coming off of her. The third noticed this and tried to think of a way to speed things up before a bloodbath happened and then smirked as he said, attention everyone. From this point on we will have a battle royal. Anyone who has not been eliminated can enter this or if they feel comfortable with what they did can sit it out. All other contestants please enter the arena area and we will fight until only one stands. Hannah blinked and looked up before getting a look that freaked everyone around her out. She disappeared in a swirl of leaves and appeared next to Naruto and leaned forward and bit him on the neck and pulled back before saying, That shows everyone I chose you as my mate. Now go kick my brother's ass along with anyone else out there. Naruto turned and pushed her ag ass the wall and forced his lips on hers as his hands ran down her body and rubbed her inner thigh with his knee. Hannah was getting weak in the legs and heard a growl from behind Naruto as her brother looked ready to kill. It did not help anything that the contestant area where they were it could be seen by everyone in the stadium. Naruto broke the kiss and quickly nipped her on the neck getting a gasp from her and he said, tonight. She just nodded and slapped his butt as he turned and walked out into the arena. When he got there he said, okay, I don't want to waste any time so all of you against me. All the genins looked at each other and back at Naruto and Hana screamed. Show them what you got Narakan, show them why you are my fiancé. Getting gasped through the stadium. Kiba looked at the other contestants. Two members of Kabuto team, Shino, Choji, Lee, Tenten, Neji all were there looking at him. Neji said, fate has determined that you shall lose. And started to charge at Naruto who created five cage bunshins to test out his attacks. Tenten jumped into the air and started to throw weapons at the clones and the original until Naruto did some hand signs and sent a Kamatachi at her and her weapons sending both away. Shino had his bugs fly into the air and take the form of a giant hand and flew at Naruto who then went and bit his thumb and started doing hand signs fast and summoned 20 frogs and said, dinner time. And the frogs smirked and started to eat the bugs. Shino paled and recalled his bugs that had not been eaten yet. Up in the stand Shino's dad raised an eyebrow and said, Fatality, flawless victory. Making everyone around him send questioning looks in his direction. Lee shouted, Naruto-kun, your flames of youth burn brightly, let's test them in a duel of Tiajutsu. Naruto looked at him and said, Sorry, I was trying to figure out how to get off the road of life. Making everyone who knew Kakashi faceplant. Lee had fake tears running down his face and said, On my honor. I will defeat you and show everyone that a dead last can overcome. Naruto raised an eyebrow and said, Funny, I am the dead last and I just kicked the rookie of the year's ass. Who's your rookie of the year? Neji who had just finished killing the last cage bunshin said, That would be me. Naruto looked at him and said, Fine, I will take you out first, at least your reaction time was better than the Uchiha's. Now that I have figured out your timing with my clones I can beat you. Come Hyuga. And Asunda stands no one in the stands recognized except Hana who got a grin and said, Hyuga's going down. Hanada looked at her and said, What do you mean? Hana said, That is Naruto personal style. Watch and you will see what I mean. And looked back in the arena. Naruto did ten hand seals and put both hand together in front of him like he was at a funeral and bent his front leg but kept his back leg stretched behind him so he looked like an upside down check mark. Neji charged and went to seal of a point in Naruto's shoulder but when he was almost there a barrier shot up around Naruto and sent Neji back 10 feet. Everyone in the stands was looking at it in curiosity not knowing what that was. Neji stood up and wiped some blood away from his mouth and then got into a 64 palm strike position and went to attack Naruto who just stood there not moving taking every hit and was bored like nothing was happening. When Neji hit the last point he was panting and looked at Naruto and asked, how come none of my attacks worked? Naruto smiled and said, They did but not on me. Looking at one of Shino who fell forward on the ground shocking everyone in the arena. Neji asked, How? Naruto smiled and said, Simple, 
I took my father's hummingbird style and modified it to mix ninjutsu in it. That was what I call the food and hummingbird. Any tiajutsu attack I should receive that has chakra mixed in is sent to a person or object of my choice and all the energy from the attack is sent with the wind manipulation I add. I can target anyone within 150 feet of me or less depending on how much chakra was in the initial strikes so each of the chakra hits you gave me was sent toward Shino and all I felt were little barrier you hit the first time was me actually activating the jutsu. And Naruto broke his hands and got into the regular hummingbird stance. He or she heard Naruto explanation and frowned as he realized that this style would effectively neutralize his entire clan's tiajutsu. Neji seemed to realize this and looked at Naruto and said, you made a mistake cancelling your jutsu just now. If I am right it only works as long as we're in that particular stance. Naruto said, correct, that was a strictly defensive form I made so if I was outnumbered agents a group of enemies who used chakra to strengthen fear blows I could do damage to them while receiving minor hits myself. Now let's begin. And did a leg strike at Neji feet who jumped in the air to avoid it. Naruto went from a leg sweep into a vertical leg uppercut and hit Neji in the back of the knee and landed on his feet. Unfortunately for Neji when he landed his knee gave out and he cried out in pain. Naruto then charged Neji who went for a one-hit knockout strike above the heart only for Naruto to twist at just his fingers tips lengths and roll down Neji arms still turning and brought his elbow down on the base of his neck knocking him out. At that moment Lee charged having took the time to remove his weights. Naruto closed his eyes and ducked under the leg sweep Lee had tried and sent two punched where Lee's leg was a moment before but Lee had used the momentum to try and kick Naruto in the chest. Naruto rolled with the impact of the kick and grabbed Lee's leg and he swung Lee's entire body in a body slam into the ground. Naruto then sent a punch to both shoulders of Lee while he was away but Lee did a springboard off the ground before Naruto could do more damage. Lee tried to kick Naruto's chin to send him into the air but the blows to his shoulder had caused him to fall on the ground and not get the strength behind the kick like it should. Naruto kneed Lee in the gut and felt someone grab a hold of him from behind. The guy who grabbed him said, you're done for now, I can absorb chakra and I will suck you dry. Naruto started to chuckle and turned to full blown laughter and said, that's impossible. My father left me instructions in the scroll with the Hiraishin and the hummingbird style to use the seal he placed on me as a child. I have an endless supply of chakra so have fun. And Naruto put his hands in a ram seal and then his chakra flared 60 feet in the air shocking the entire stadium unable to believe that a genin could have this much chakra, even with a demon inside him. The guy who was smirking before having caught Naruto was not happy right now. There are two dangers in the world of ninja that don't concern other people. One is chakra depletion which is when you run out of chakra and the other was chakra overload. The human body unless it can handle it at the time has a limited amount of chakra in it at any time. If more comes only two things can happen. One your coils get bigger to hold it if it's a little. Two if it's a lot it blows something which is exactly what happens right about. Dot now. A scream could be heard and five spots on the guy's body suddenly explode with chakra pouring out of it like a funnel. The five spots are over at the sub restrictors coming from the eighth gate. It is not widely known but the gates have a backup system in the body that slows how fast the energy from the gates open. Those five points are right where each limb connects to the main body. The guy's screams ended a moment after they started as he passed out from the pain. Sakura looks on and asked. What happened to him? Kabuto pushes his glasses up and said. Chakra overload. He won't be able to control his chakra for about six months now since he just blowed the relays in his body. He was warned about it from his clan's notes on Theer Bloodline. He should have read it better. Sakura looked at Kabuto and asked, How can you be so cold hearted? Kabuto looked at her and said, I am a medic. I deal with knowing what the human body can do and what it can't. If a patient refuses to listen to his doctor, then the doctor is not responsible when he gets hurt. In a neutral tone, Kabuto other teammate walked over and picked up his teammate and walked off the field saying, I quit, and back to the waiting area. That just left Tenen, Lee who was hurt and Kiba who remember what his sister and mother said before the tournament. Flashback six days ago when Hannah got home after leaving Naruto training she walked into her home and saw her mother and brother looking at her. Her mother looked questionably and her brother pissed. Kiba said, what did you mean by saying Naruto was your fiancé? Hannah sat down and said, What did it sound like to you? 
he has claimed me as his mate and I ready to claim him. Shown the mark on her neck from his bite. Thier mom looked at Hannah and asked, Do you know about him Hannah? A voice from under the table said, Yes she does. I told both her and him when they were children about it. Causing everyone to look at Kuromaru who was laying with his paws in front of him and relaxing. Sume said, What do you mean Kuromaru? Kuromaru said, Simple. I promised Madame Rin I would watch out for her sensei when she left. After that I watched out for his son. Making Sume wide-eyed and Kiba confused. Sume said, Are you sure about that Kuromaru? Is he really his son? Kuromaru said, Yes, besides the fact he looks just like him after removing the whiskers and the fact they have the same family smell there's no doubt in my mind. Sume said, But the law, Kuromaru said, does not work on animals like me. I helped them become friends and seen them fall in love. She has also told him the laws of our clan so that way he knows what her way of thinking is. Now if you will excuse me. I am going to take a nap. And got up and left the room. Kiba looked at his mom who looked sad and then his sister and said, I won't allow him to marry you. Besides the fact he smells of foxes I don't think he's good enough for you. Sume looked at Kiba and said, That's your right but know this. If you formally challenge him in a fight and he wins over you when he marries your sister he will be the next clan head and leader of the pack when I step down unless you can beat him so be ready for the consequences if you do. Remember it has to be one on one when you make the challenge. Are you sure you want to dispute your sister's claim for him? End flashback Kiba thought, is he really good enough for her, as he watched Naruto get ready to continue this fight. Naruto looked around and thought, it's almost time, I can't wait. And thought about what happened a week ago. Flashback Jiraiya and Naruto were training when both people stopped and Naruto said, We got company. A scream was heard and a man came flying out of the woods with a sound headband on, and a moment later Uchiha Itachi walked out and pulled a kuniya out of the man he just killed. Naruto turned to him and said, So what brings you back, Itachi? I thought your mission still had time. Itachi smiled and Jiraiya asked, How do you know about Itachi? Itachi said, simple, he was in the Hokage's office with me when the massacre hit. I had just got done saving him from some of Danzo goons acting as civilians. Anyways the reason I am here is the same reason he was. Jiraiya asked, that would be. Itachi sighed and said, war, Orochimaru is planning on attacking in the Chunin exams. He is planning on kidnapping my brother and destroying the leaf. Naruto asked, so what was he doing here? Itachi said, gathering information. I don't know who else he has doing it but I felt this information was too important not to let you know so I killed the rest by poisoning Thier food with a drug Tsunade made. That is why I have returned as my mission is complete. And threw a bag to Jiraiya that had all the Atasuki rings. Naruto sighed and said, security around this village sucks. I know because I pulled enough pranks on Anbu and the clans it is not funny. Jiraiya seemed to think it over and said, we need to go to the Hokage office now. All three nodded and two leaf shushined and one flame shushin away. When the three appear the third was wide-eyed seeing a flame shushin and then he asked, What are you doing here Itachi? Itachi sighed and Jiraiya handed the bag to the third and said, Simple, his mission's done and Orochimaru planning on attacking during the Chunin exams and starting a war. Gaki here said security sucks from his own knowledge and if he could get by it then Orochimaru men won't have a problem. The third who was still trying to get over the fact that a flame shushin just happened and Itachi finishing his mission sighed and said, if he's planning on doing it during the exams we are screwed. I don't know how we can get around it right now. Jiraiya seemed to think for a moment and looked at Naruto and smiled and said, I got an idea that could get us out of this trouble and also help with the threat of Orochimaru. Everyone looked at him and the third said, what is it? Jiraiya smiled and said, the trials Urashi had to do. The third got wide-eyed and said, you can't be serious. That would only work if either the council agreed to it or two Hokages approved of it and I am the only Hokage right now. Jiraiya smiled and said, not if you name the god I'm who will agree to it. The third said, Jiraiya, you can't do it. You are needed with your spy network and we also have to have someone to test. Itachi said, Naruto here could pass them if what I saw is any of his skills. The third sighed and said, that still does not explain who will be the fifth. Jiraiya smiled and said, Tsunade will do it. 
The third asked, How can you be sure she will? Jiraiya smiled and said, I can handle that and since I saw her two days ago I can find her and get her back here but Itachi will have to come with me for this to work. Just have the Gaki do the trials and then cancel the exams under those pretenses or alter them. You know what I mean. The third thought for a moment and smiled and said, that might work but it will all fall on Naruto's shoulders. Naruto asked, will someone please tell me what the hell you guys are talking about? The third got a serious voice and said, Naruto Uzumaki Kazama, I as the third Hokage of Konoha initiate the Hokage trials. It is an S-class mission that you must complete on your own with no help. You can't tell anyone about it and you must complete it completely before the day of the exams in six days. Do you accept? Naruto asked, what will happen if I pass or fail? The third said, if Tsunade agrees to the challenge you will be named Rokudaim Hokage of Konoha and will take office in a few years after you get some more training and learn the required number of jutsu. If you fail then you will never be allowed to become Hokage. Your father had to pass these tests. I could not decide if I wanted him or Orochimaru to be the Yandaimi at the time so I initiated this challenge. I can't tell you more until you accept or decline. Naruto thought for a moment and said, I accept. The third smiled and said, Good, here is your mission objectives. End flashback. Naruto smiled and said, So Kiba, are you going to challenge me or do you think I am good enough for your sister? Kiba sneered and said, An idiot like you could never be good enough for her. Naruto asked, And what if I was a Hokage, would I be good enough for her? Kiba laughed and said, Like an idiot like you could ever be Hokage. A female voice echoed through the arena and said, he is the Rokudaim Hokage of Konoha if you must know. Shocking everyone as Tsunade and another Naruto appeared with Sasuke over his shoulder and Naruto dropped Sasuke on the ground and said, I made it all the way to the checkpoint and never stopped once old man. The third went up in a puff of smoke and laughing could be heard and then a civilian went up in a puff of smoke and the third appeared in his place and said, Well done Naruto, I see that your final challenge ended just like the others in complete success. Even with me watching I never saw you make the kidnapping. A council member asked, what is the meaning of this Hokagasama? How dare Tsunade call him the Rokudaim Hokage of Konoha? Naruto asked, what gives the former council of Konoha the right to talk to the Sandame Hokage like that? The council member asked, what do you mean by former? The third said, as of two o'clock yesterday afternoon under the rules of the village charter when Tsunade was sworn in as Godaim Hokage of Konoha the Council of Konoha was disbanded and this village returned to the two Hokage setup that it was founded on. Also as of the moment Tsunade returned with Sasuke a moment ago Naruto is officially named Rokudaim Hokage of Konoha for passing the Hokage trials. Hiyash asked, but Hokagasama, how can this boy pass the trials as you claim? The third held up thirteen different scrolls and said, he started six days ago when we learned that Orochimaru was planning on attacking the village of Konoha during the Chunin exams the Hokage trials. His mission was simple, infiltrate all thirteen clans of Konoha and return with the oaths of allegiances, test village security risk which he did so well it shocked me with the results. Ibiki asked, what do you mean Hokagasama? Naruto said, I infiltrated 200 potential enemies into the village over the week all wearing a henge and nobody figured it out or questioned it. I also acted as Hokage to see if anyone would get suspicious and no one did. Why do you think people came for the exams when it was only a Konoha event? In fact let me show you what I mean. And then 200 of the people in the stadium went up in a puff of smoke showing everyone that they were Kajbunshans. Naruto smiled and said, that was not the only threats I found. I noted the security at all the important parts of the village like the academy, hospital, front gates, Hokage tower, library, archives and I was able to bypass each of them with a simple hench. I also did a kidnapping in front of nearly 600 ninja and made it all the way outside of the village and back Aegean with the victim and no one saw it, pointing to Sasuke. The third asked, when did you kidnap Sasuke anyways? Naruto said, during the explosion I created a clone underground and had one waiting in the shadow. When our jutsu met I had one of my clones replace with him and then hanged into him and then I used the other one to knock him out and take him away and nobody questioned it. Also the Uchiha is not blinded. That was my clone that was damaged so you prized student is safe Kakashi. 
spitting out the name making Kakashi flinch. Danzo said, you still can't let that thing be Hokage. Danzo felt a kuniya pierce his back and Naruto said, Danzo, for the murder of the Uchiha clan you are Harvey ordered to death, and everyone gasped as the person who killed him was Itachi Uchiha. The third said, that's right, Itachi was in my office at the time of the massacre but only people who knew of this was myself, Itachi and Naruto. I needed Itachi for a multiple year mission that ended recently so we let Danzo massacre of his family slide for the moment since we were weakened by it and Itachi took the blame. Now you know the truth of the Uchiha massacre and no one is to treat him with any disrespect. Also that thing you called it is none other than the only remaining member of the Kazama clan and son of Arashi Kazama, the Yondiame Hokage. If anyone so much as tries any of the shit that you have done in the past he has the right to order your arrest or execution, making several people flinch. Naruto sighed and said, now that the council has been informed that they are disbanded and you and Tsunade are going to start getting the village ready when do I meet my team. The third smiled and said, your team will be comprised of you as leader, Hana as your tracker, Enko as your infiltration expert and second in command and Karania for Genjutsu. You will inform your team of the mission since you know of what your mission entails so leave when ready for this S rank mission. As of this moment you are ranked special Junin and when the time comes you will take over your duties as Hokage after the threat has been dealt with. Naruto nods and said, Hana, if you would get the other members of our team and meet me where we trained one week ago and bring your supplies for a six month mission. Also Hana, I hate to say this but don't bring your companions. We won't be able to use them on the mission because of the time we will be in hostile territory and left in a flame shushin leaving a very shocked and confused group of ninja. Kurinai and Anko quickly found Hana and they left and Tsunade cracked her knuckles and said, now what do I hear about you treating my only living relative like a common animal? Everyone in the stadium flinched realizing that since Tsunade was the grand niece of the Nadaim and the Kazama clan married into the Nadaim's family they had a very pissed off distant relative ready to kill them. Kiba was confused and his mother appeared next to him and said, Looks like you are lucky you did not challenge him as I am sure now that you would have lost. Kiba could only nod. When Naruto appeared at the field a little bit later he saw three very pissed off looking females and he smiled and said, So who has questions? Hana asked, Okay Narukun, what the hell is actually going on? Naruto sighed and said, After you left to rest last week Erozen and came back and we started to practice some more. A little bit later we both detected someone and Itachi who was coming to inform us about Orochimaru plans killed the spy from the sound village which is a village Orochimaru created. The only way we could stop the Chunin exams is if another exam was taking place of more importance hence the Hokage trials and with me being the only person that had the skills necessary at the moment to take the challenges at the appropriate rank it was either I take the challenger and pass or lose my right to ever become Hokage and if I declined we would be at war during the exams. Kurinai asked, what do you mean by you were the only one of the right rank to take the test? What exactly are the trials? Naruto sighed and said, the trials are a test set when either a candidate can't be found or more than one is available to test if they display the skills necessary for the job. You cannot be over Chunin rank and you must be a member of this village and you must also have created one new jutsu either in Tia, Nin, Ken, Gen, or Medical. You all saw mine in the stadium today Ajans Neji. You have to do it alone and cannot tell anyone about it until after you pass or fail. Basically you have to be able to fight Ajans someone of superior numbers and skills for an extended period of time and then you must get the scrolls one got as well. That was where me fighting the ABNU and Hunter Nins came in at. All three women were speechless until Anko asked, what is our mission exactly? Naruto sighed and said, we are to go and do hit and run strikes agents the sound village hurting them as much as possible to give Konoha the time we need to get our defenses ready. If we do it good enough we might just avoid a war altogether. That was why I had to test the village security as well to demonstrate I had the skills to lead a mission like this. Anko asked, so what is your plan? Naruto pulled out a map and said, according to what Itachi and Erozanan have told me this is the location of the sound village. We are going to go in and first look for all main routes to the village and possible patrol patrons and determine when and where we are to hit them first. Our first strike will have to be hard or they could just replace whatever's lost on the first strike and be on the lookout for us afterwards. 
Anyone we come across from Thier village will have to be eliminated. Does anyone have any other suggestions that I have not thought of? Kurinai asked, How are we going to get information on the inside of the village? We can't just walk right in the front gate. Naruto smiled and said, That's exactly what I am going to do, making all three ladies wide-eyed. Naruto sighed as he saw they were about to protest and said, I can have myself Discus as a mist ninja that died recently that I knew and tried to get in while I have a Kujbunshin a few moments behind me. If I get in then no problem but if not then I will retreat and let my Kujbunshin get in while the guards are after me. Hannah asked dreading the question, what about our marriage? Naruto sighed and said, we will have to postpone till after we get back. Call it a reason to make sure we all come back alive. The three ladies looked confused and Kurinai asked, what do you mean all? Naruto said, Hannah, would you please read the scroll Kurinai has in her cleavage, making Kurinai wide-eyed. Hannah asked, how do you know she has a scroll in her cleavage and how do you know what it says? Naruto smiled and said, simple, I was in the hall of archives when she came in looking up the clan restoration laws of Konoha and I heard her and Anko here talking about it. I may have been in a henge but I still had to work hard not to have a nosebleed from some of the things these two had come up with. A few I don't think are physically possible. Hannah looked at her two friends who were blushing and said, so the pervert was right about you both wanting me and him. Anko sighed and said, damn it Hannah. The gaki here seems to be the only decent guy in this whole damn village. It's been so bad for Kurinai and me that we have had to entertain each other and we're about to invite you in when you told us about your engagement. Hannah narrowed her eyes and Naruto sighed and said, Look ladies, I am not saying I am marring all three of you because as of right now only Hannah has my heart but I will not turn the possibility into the trash but only if Hannah agrees with it and we don't have any kind of problems because I don't want to have any more heartache in my life. I hate to break this up and we have six months to figure out what to do about it but we need to leave the village in an hour so are you all three ready? They all looked at each other and nodded before heading toward the gate. The trip out of the village was uneventful but after about two hours of traveling all three females noticed something and Anko was the first to ask, Hey Gaki, why do you keep changing directions and having us head back toward Konoha? Naruto stopped on the branch he was on and he said with his back turned, The reason is simple. Not only was Itachi and that guy who were spying on me made it into the village but they made it without alerting anyone of Thier presence. Itachi I can guess why but the fact the guy who was spying was barley genin level means either someone is watching the village to learn our patterns. Someone is giving them information on our security, or we have a spy in our ranks. I hope that it's someone watching the village but in case it's not I want to make our enemy think that we are actually heading away from where we are going. By now Aerosanen should be ready. All three ladies looked at him and asked, What are you talking about? Just then an explosion happened about four miles south of Thier location and Naruto smiled and said, that, right now all of us was just in a training exercise and are in need of emergency medical assistant that only Tsunade and Shizun are allowed to treat. You all look pretty good having me use ten exploding tags on you nearly killing us all. Do you understand now? As he turned and started heading toward Thier real destination as the ladies started following him thinking about what he said. Anko smirked and asked, where did you come up with that kind of plan Gaki? Naruto stopped for a moment and said, It was a failsafe plan I made a few years ago so that way when me and Hannah got married if the people tried to kill or harm her we could disappear and that would give us a head start. With his back to them. All three ladies looked at him wide eyed and Hannah asked, So you were wanting me to become a missing nin if they hurt me? Naruto with his back still to them said, if they hurt you yes, if they killed you I would release Kayubi Bekwase I would have nothing left to live for. All three women lowered their eyes and Naruto said, come on we have a lot to do. Time skip six months the two guards at the gate were bored. Why you ask? Simple, for six months now they have been on a wartime rotation even though no attacks have been seen and everyone is forgetting a war was going on. One guard yawned and looked down the road and blinked as he saw four figures walking toward the gates slowly. As they approached the guards became alert Bekwase they could literally smell death on these people. As they finally got close one asked, Halt, who are you and what is your business in Konoha? The guy who had blonde hair with red highlights looked around and said, Abnu stand down. Naruto Uzumaki and his team are returning from our mission. 
The guards blinked and looked at the person who claimed to be Thea Rokadiami and suddenly a swirl of leaves was seen and a dog masked ABNU appeared and said, it's him. Naruto smiled and said, Kakashi, good to see you Aegean. Please have Granny and the old man go and assemble the council. I need to inform them about what's going on. Ladies, go ahead and get some rest but I want all three of you to stop by the hospital and get checked out and make sure none of you are still hurt. All three ladies nodded and disappeared in a swirl of leaves. Kakashi looked at Naruto and asked, What happened? You don't look like yourself Naruto. Naruto sighed and said, I don't want to say it twice so just do what I ask Kakashi and you can listen it. I need to talk to you anyways to get my head straight. Kakashi nodded and left in a swirl of leaves. Naruto looked at both guards and said, Do not let anyone leave the village until the meeting is over. If they try to leave have them taken to Ibiki. Both guards nodded and Naruto left in a swirl of flames. At a bathhouse on the other side of town an old man was peeking and suddenly he tensed when he felt a presence behind him and asked, so how did it go Gaki? Naruto sighed and sat down a giant the fence Jiraiya was looking through and pulled off the gloves he had on his hands and said, my hands are stained with blood Arosanin. Come to the meeting as I am going to need you and Kakashi to help straighten out my head after I tell what's been happening. Jiraiya nodded as Naruto left in a swirl of flames and said, just like his father, as he closed his notebook and left to make it to the council chambers. 25 minutes later the council had been assembled and Jiraiya and Kakashi were there and he or she asked. So what is it that you needed to speak to us so urgently about Tsunade-sama? Tsunade sighed and said, Naruto Uzumaki has returned and called for this meeting. Murmurs went through the crowd and the doors opened and Naruto walked in wearing an outfit much like his father's except the kanji on the back said Death Flash. He walked into the center of the room and said, Thank you for coming so quickly. Tsunade asked, So what's so urgent you needed me to assemble the council instead of telling me privately? Naruto eyes glossed over and said, The war is over. Making everyone wide-eyed and murmurs broke out. The Sandiami asked, What do you mean Naruto? Naruto sighed and said, I destroyed everything in the Sound Village including Orochimaru. Dot and, making everyone silence as he said, And the Shodem, Naidane, and my father saying the last part quietly. Tsunade sighed and said, perhaps you should explain from the beginning. Naruto nods and said, for the first two weeks after we left we started absorbing sounds patrol routes and supply lines. It was not that hard and we started guerrilla warfare taking out them when it was in our best option. This continued for two months until Orochimaru had no choice but to try and stop us. By that time we had already killed nearly 300 of his men but they were all chunin or lower. When Orochimaru got involved he was not alone. If you all remember when we did the fake battle for the Chunin exams a genin named Kabuto said he was a medical ninja. He was actually a junin and Orochimaru right hand mond and spy. Hana, Kurenai and Anko fought him while I took on Orochimaru. I surprised him because he was not prepared to fight me with the Hiraishin and he retreated. After that he started sending waves of men after a string to start a war of attrition. We would only get maybe an hour or two between battles most of the time. Had it not been for Kayubi Chakra my entire team would have died during that time. After a month of this and nearly 800 of his men dead Orochimaru came back Aegean with his elite guards who he called the Sound 4 who each had a second level curse seal, Kabuto and himself. During the battle Anko was captured as was Karenia. Hana and I had to withdraw after that because we were outmatched and Orochimaru reinforcements were coming to aid him. I had Hannah go and try to determine where they were being held because it was obvious that they wanted us alive while I was recovering from the fight. When Hannah did not return six hours later I had recovered enough to go and I found that he had been captured as well. That's not exactly right. I was told by the Shodiami Hokage and the Naidame. Orochimaru used some forbidden jutsu that sacrifice his own men to revive anyone who's dead under his control. After they told me I fought them and was able to destroy them but I was severely wounded Aegean. I did not know the specifics of the jutsu and when my father came and helped me in the end of the battle I thought he must have broke free of the jutsu. He helped me then go and save my team and then helped us for about 3 weeks do more hit and run damage to them. After the 3 weeks we thought we were going into another supply line but we wound up being surrounded by an ambush. 
Orochimaru came and then ordered my father to kill my team as his entire army surrounded us and he attacked them but each was able to avoid an instant death and I was able to get him away with Cage Bunshin and then I channeled Kayubi Chakra into them to save them. Orochimaru order everyone to attack while he thought I was distracted. I knew I would not be able to do anything to stop them especially since he revived the Shodiami and Nidame Aegean. I accepted my fate and knew that I had only one chance to save my team and I used it. Everyone was stunned by what they were hearing and Itachi asked, What did you use Naruto-kun? Naruto looked up and said, Fuinjutsu Shiki Fujin, Demonic Soul Seal, making everyone wide-eyed. Sandiami asked, But how are you alive then? Naruto chuckled and said, Remember old man. I had two souls in me and the jutsu only takes one. The third thought for a moment and paled and said, So you used Kayubi's soul to do the jutsu, answering everyone's question. Naruto nods and said, Yeah, but he won't be able to break free like he could have when dad first sealed him into me. Jiraiya asked, How can you be sure of that, Naruto? Naruto smiled and said, Remember when I told you I was having to use Kayubi chakra to survive the war of attrition? My body had to adapt to that constant strain, and the furball did not want to see me die because if I do, he does, so he kept healing me. When I left the village, I could go up to three tails of his chakra without any trouble. During that time I made it up to six tails. When I fought the Shodiami and Nidame I made it to seven tails even with the Shodem bloodline cutting it in half made me only as strong as four tails when I was absorbing the seventh. During the hit and runs with dad I absorbed the eighth tail and when I summoned the death god I quickly absorbed the nine as he was taking Kayubi out of his cell so Kayubi is powerless but I had to ask the death god to do something as payment. My body could not handle the pressure it was under so I offered him three quarters of my chakra as payment for releasing the three Hokage's souls from his belly which he did but the changes that happened to my body were still there so I can only go do two tails of chakra. Tsunade who was quite asked, so what now? Naruto sighed and said, I have my team at the hospital getting checked out and make sure none of them are permanently hurt. I request at least a month off for me and my team because we wound up killing over 2000 people and here is a little gift for Konoha Ikonemi. I got all scrolls and money as well and I will be going through them and seeing what we should use and what should go into the forbidden scroll. And he pulled out a scroll and set it on the table in the middle. Tsunade nods and said, Granted. Your father's house has been set up for you and your fiancé. Naruto turned and said, Fiancés, and left leaving a Kuris group. A civilian asked, So what did he give us that could help our ekonemi? Tsunade said, I don't know, it looks like it's a standard seal on it so why don't you put some blood on it and channel a little chakra and see what it is. The civilian being a retired shinobi nods and bites his thumb and puts some blood on the seal. Shouts and screams of bloody murder were coming from the council chamber. Naruto stopped and turned and said, Idiots, and he walked toward his home. Back in the council chamber's shouts, screams and puking could be heard as everyone was sick from the sight that they all looked at. Kakashi who was looking green looked at what had popped out and he said, Well he did say it would help Konoha Ikonemi. What better way then to cash in all those heads for the bounties on them? As he pulls out his book and leaves in a swirl of leaves. Tsunade looked at the head and her fear of blood froze her on the spot but then she saw the head of Orochimaru her eyes returned and she said, this meeting adjourned, and left in a swirl of leaves. For the next few hours all ABNU and Hunternan along with Ibiki was going through all the heads checking all bingo books seeing who was who. Luckily most of them still had Thier headbands form Thier home village. That day was officially called Headless Wednesday forever after that. When Naruto got to the hospital he saw his three female companions all standing there together and Naruto smiled and then tensed as he felt an arm set on his shoulder. He turned and saw the third along with Tsunade, Jiraiya and Kakashi and the third said, I think we should talk. Naruto nodded and motioned for the three ladies to follow him. They soon found an empty waiting room and after closing the door and sealing the room with privacy jutsu the third asked, go ahead when you're ready. Naruto sighed and asked, before I begin, how long did it take the council to find that loophole? Tsunade said, two weeks and by that time they lost more than half of Thier power it was a good gamble. Kakashi looked around and asked, why am I here, I thought you hated me. Naruto sighed and said, you and the pervert here are the only two I know that knew who and what my real dad was like, not what he became. 
it all went downhill during the mission. The third said, why don't you tell us what really happened? I know enough about your seal to know that what you said happened could not happen. Hannah said, I am sure Naruto told you about how his dad came and helped save us after we were captured. They nodded and she said, well after that he spent the next three weeks trying to get to know Naruto and asked about his childhood and his life and how we got together and things like that. I never seen Naruto so happy as he was drring that time when we were not doing hit and runs that is. Anko said, that is when things hit the fan. Orochimaru had him lead us into a trap. Naruto had trusted the Yandaimi to lead us since he had more battle experience than any of us. We set up to take out the supply line when the caravan was supposed to show. When the carts showed up and we prepared for a strike Orochimaru had six summons break out of the ground surrounding us and his men came out of the holes the summons dug. The cart that were covered were uncovered and more men came out of them. We started fighting as fast and hard as we could. That was until the Yandaimi used Hiriishin to catch us and cut the tendons in our legs with a kuniya. Naruto had used his cage bunshin as a cover to try and guard our retreat and when he turned he saw us all being held captive and the Yandaimi had a sadistic look on his face. Orochimaru walked up beside him along with Kabuto and said, Proceed. Naruto sighed and said, Dad and I started an all-out fight. Hiriishin, Rasengan, cage bunshin. Every jutsu I did he beat. I was able to take out probably 30 or 40 of his men in collateral damage. Orochimaru had his men hold kuniyas at each the ladies here's necks and made them watch the fight. I think it went on for about half an hour or better. Anko said, that's when it happened, Kurenai said, that's when the Yandaimi started to talk. Naruto said, he. Flashback the Yandaimi looked at Naruto and said, I am disappointed Kayubi. I figured with the lie you have been living these past few years you would have gotten stronger. At the name the Yandaimi called him Naruto flinched but stood his ground as the Yandaimi said. But I guess a demon like you would be too stupid to train. I mean, the people of the village gave you all the warning you needed to know you needed to get stronger. They tested you constantly. I guess it shows that you were really the fox. No son of mine would have been that stupid. Naruto was pissed and said. Shut up. The Yandaimi said. I guess I don't have a choice. I will just have to do the ceiling right this time. And started to do hand sign and soon the figure of the Shinigami could be seen standing behind him and stuck his hand through the body of the Yandaimi and into Naruto. Naruto could not believe his own father would be doing this to him and suddenly he found himself inside the sewers in front of the Kayubi. Kayubi looked at Naruto and said, Boy, are you really going to let that man take your life from you? I have an option for you. Let me have control of your body for 10 minutes and I will stop this battle and save your lady friends. Naruto blinked and asked, Why should I trust you, Fox? It's your fault my life turned out like this and beside it the Shinigami is taking my soul. I can already feel it leaving. Kayubi said, I can stop it, but you must do as I say. Let me have control of your body for 10 minutes. Naruto looked at the Fox and Aegean's better judgment asked, What do I have to do? Kayubi said, I am going to surround you with two tails of my chakra to break the Shinigami hold. When my chakra surrounds you rip the seal off the cage. I will do the rest. Just so you know I will die when this is over but I want to pay your father back for putting me in this prison and also for what he did to you. I may be a demon but we don't harm children if we can keep from it. Naruto nodded and two tails of chakra went out of the cage and surrounded Naruto and Naruto ripped the tag off and everything went blank. Everyone was starring at the Yandaimi after he finished doing hand signs and flinched a moment ago and then Naruto flinched and looked scared. Everyone's breath was held weighing to see what was going to happen when suddenly red chakra exploded out of Naruto body swirling around him and covering the entire body in what looked like Kayubi but only with seven tails of chakra. Naruto opened his mouth and said, Shinigami. The human there has already paid his soul to you to seal me in this boy. The pale-skinned man behind you stole him from you using a forbidden jutsu. Since you had to come here and want your payment I offer a trade. My soul for all those that I choose to seal including the one who escaped and the one who took him from you. The boy will live though. The figure of the Shinigami disappeared and reappeared behind the now Kayubified Naruto and Kayubi smirked and said, Cage Bunshin no jutsu. After putting his hand in the right seals. Suddenly the entire area was filled with nearly 10,000 cage bunshins, 
Each enemy ninja had five cage bunshin holding on to him and in some cases even more in the hand of the shinigami went through Naruto and came out all the cage bunshins. The cage bunshin had even latched onto the summons of Orochimaru. The Yandaimi tried to flee as did Orochimaru and Kabuto but were stopped when Kayubi tail wrapped around them and held them in place as his chakra burned them. The ninja that held the ladies tried to run and one even tried to kill Anko but Kayubi speared him in the head with a tail and cage bunshins grabbed the other two. Kayubi looked at the woman and said, take care of the kid and should I ever escape as long as one of his descendants live I will never return. On that you have my word. Seal. And suddenly the men who were all screaming trying to get free cried out and flinched at one time as they fell to the floor dead. Hana looked at Naruto as a backlash of Kayubi chakra surrounded him and then instead of the seven tail fox form around Naruto it was just two tail and he looked fine except he looked like he was asleep. The energy left him and he started to fall forward and Hana moved and caught him. End flashback. Naruto said, and that's the truth about what happened. I told the guards at the gate to call me Uzumaki because after what happened I don't feel I have the right to be called by my father's name. I don't even know if I should have the right to call him father. As he sat down looking at the floor and everyone looked at him sadly. Kakashi asked. What was your dad like when you were doing the hit and runs? Naruto thought for a moment and said. He was joking and kind and questionable. No matter how random it was he would ask the weirdest questions. Jiraiya said. Forget everything you know about your dad except how he was during that time. That was the real him. Naruto smiled sadly and said. So when do we have our marriage? trying to change the subject. Hannah said, I think we should wait until we had some time to recover from these mission. Kuranai said, I think we should do it before we have to do mission Aegean. Anko said, I say we do it now. Hannah looked at her and said, you just want to sleep with him. Kakashi giggled and asked, so how did all three of you agree to get married? I know how Hannah and Naruto but what about you two? Naruto said, we had a contest. I lost. Jiraiya asked, Really, what kind of contest? Anko said, We made a contest that if he could resist getting a hard on for an entire day, Kuranai and I would not marry him. He said he agreed to that since he was faithful to Hana and she agreed also. The third asked, So how did you lose? Naruto mumelidi something and Tsunade asked, What was that? Naruto said, they walked around camp all day naked and took turns kissing each other while deciding what they wanted to do to me. They even had Hannah in on it before the end of the day. Everyone looked at him and all the men said, lucky bastard. Naruto asked, so where are we going to stay once we get married, my apartment not big enough. Tsunade said, you got your dad's estate, don't tell me you don't feel it's yours, that was not him so get over it. Anko looked at Kuranai and both nodded before grabbing Hana and Naruto and disappearing in a swirl of leaves. When Naruto and company appeared in Thier new home Naruto blinked and asked, how did you know where it was and how to get here? Anko smirked and said, when we figured out who your dad was we scoped the place out. Naruto was about to say something when Hana was shoved on top of him by Kuranai. Naruto was startled until Hana started to kiss him. Naruto soon closed his eyes and started to return the kiss until he heard a moan coming from a few feet away. Hana broke the kiss and looked with Naruto and saw Anko and Kuranai completely naked in a 69 position having a light snack. Naruto looked at Hana and blinked as he suddenly found she had flipped while he was looking at the other two and now he was staring at the slits of his fiance. He sniffed it and started to lick her clit as he felt her taking his pants off and he wondered how they got undressed so quick but decided to ask later. In the hospital waiting room the third asked, do you think we should have told him that when he comes off of leave he's taking over and we are retiring? Tsunade said, no let him relax for now, besides after Hana and the others asked me for those two jutsu I have the feeling he is going to want to be around Konoha more soon. Jiraiya asked, what two jutsu were those? Tsunade smiled and said, one was a pregnancy jutsu and the other was the late for a date just you. Kakashi said, Yes, I suppose they would want protection as not to get pregnant too soon but what is the late for a date jutsu? Tsunade smiled and said, basically it's a jutsu that removes all cloths in one second and you're mistaken Kakashi. They did not want a jutsu to prevent pregnancy. They wanted one to conceive. 
Kakashi eye widened and Jiraiya pulled out a notebook and headed for the door only to be punched by Tsunade. Back with Naruto. Hana was currently on top of him humping like a dog in heat. Naruto for his part was meeting each thrust and the feeling of emptiness that he had felt ever since Kayubi took over his body was not being replaced with something else. After both climax Naruto looked at the other two ladies and sweat dropped. Naruto closed his eyes and fell asleep as he heard Hana breathing lightly as she passed out after her orgasm ended. The next few days for Naruto had went by fast and after a week of resting, correction extreme workouts, Naruto married all three women. The people of the village treated him better if not for the fact of who he was for the fact they were scared to death of what he could do. Nobody would look at him with hate any longer for fear of starting another headless day. After two weeks for a honeymoon in which Naruto and his wife's visited wave country he returned and was sworn in as Rokudime Hokage. His first order of business. The marriage of the Uchiha. Naruto looked at the couple in front of him and said, Okay, so do you Uchiha-san take this woman as your wife? He said, I do. Naruto smiled and said, and do you mistake this deadbeat as your husband? Getting a glare from the Uchiha and a laughter from a few in the crowd. She smiled and said, yes. Naruto said, then by the power vested in me as Hokage, I know pronounce you Mrs. Ayame Uchiha and Itachi Uchiha. May your children grow up without being geniuses and sought after by fangirls and fanboys. And everyone laughed as the couple kissed. Naruto smiled and then said, Sasuke come here for a moment, you to Sakura. Both looked at each other and walked up and Sakura asked, what do you want Naruto? Naruto said, I need you to sign this paper as witnesses to the wedding, Sakura, you sign here, showing a spot and she signed it. Naruto smiled and said, now your turn Sasuke, just sign right here and date it, as he showed where to sign and date it. Naruto smiled and said, now I have one last thing as per tradition of the Uchiha marriages. The bride and groom have gifts for both of the witnesses who signed the documents. Please close your eyes while they get them. Itachi looked questionably and when Sakura and Sasuke closed their eyes he mouthed, What are you talking about? Naruto smiled and said, Watch. And everyone was looking at him as he motioned to Anko and Kurunai and Anko shot out snakes at Sasuke and Sakura wrapping them together while Kurunai cast a genjutsu over Thier cloths as both were smashed together and both screamed, Hey! Naruto said, You may now kiss your bride Sasuke. After all you just signed your marriage certificate. And Sasuke paled as Sakura dove on his lips with a fangirl squeal. Itachi blinked and burst out laughing for a moment and Naruto said, Well folks. Thanks for coming today. As you can see the Uchiha clan is restoring faster than ever. We now have four Uchihas. Everyone in the crowd burst out laughing and cheering while Sasuke after breaking free of the snakes took of running while in tux and Sakura following him in a wedding dress and shouts of Sasuke-kun. Hana said, that was great but guess what? That's not the only clan restored now. Anko said, that reminds me Hokage-sama, I need to take medical leave. Kuranai said, I do as well, Hana said, same here. Naruto asked, why? Kiba walked up beside Naruto and said, well, looks like you were top dog after all huh? I mean having three women with litters at the same time. I hate to be in your shoes when it's delivery time. Naruto blinked and paled as he looked at them both and jumped over the balcony and landed in the crowd of people below and ran up to Konohamaru and handed him the Hokage hat and said, the job's yours. I got a war to fight. Konohamaru asked, What war? Naruto said, I seen babies born. Hana took me and showed me a litter being born. I have the war of diaper changing to get ready for. Litters are anywhere between two and five babies on average. That's a total of fifteen kids, and he took of running. Hana looked at Anko and Kurunai and asked, Should we tell him that women only have one or more usually? Anko said, no the more he gets ready for now the less we have to get later. Kurunai said, and it would always be fun to see him faint. All three laughed at their husband's misfortune. The end. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Remember to subscribe and like this video. See you in the next video.